Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, Rethink ADHD. I was having some conversations with y'all in the comments and a lot of questions about starting ADHD medications and just like concern about doing that. And I remember when I was in your shoes and I was trying to figure out, do I even wanna be on a medication or do I wanna just continue with cognitive behavioral therapy and coaching that it was a lot to take in. Um, even as a medical person, it was a lot to take in. So I'm gonna do this video because in hindsight, if I, had, if I could go back and do it all again, maybe some of this information would have been helpful to me but really i want you to walk away from this video understanding your options and understanding you know kind of what to expect overall from like a side effect standpoint and all of that when you're choosing your medication as you all know i'm doing a combo so i have cognitive behavioral therapy and coaching and also um, medication and that's actually how i recommend you do it i recommend you do some kind of therapy in addition to taking medication. Now, I know that's not available to everyone it's for a lot of different reasons. There's a shortage of mental health professionals and, and all of that. So we'll talk about just medications today if you are just kind of getting started. So first things first, the really important thing for you to realize is that there are two classes or two main ways to treat ADHD. So you have your stimulant medications, which are going to really work in the body by increasing either dopamine or norepinephrine, which is our flight or fight hormone in some way, shape or form. Um, and then you have your non-stimulant medications. And within your non-stimulant group, you have really three options that have been studied and are prescribed regularly. You have your norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, those or your NRIs. Those medications are going to make sure that you keep norepinephrine or that stimulating fight or flight hormone around for your body to use. Um, you have your alpha-2 adrenergic agonists like guanfacine and clonidine. And, and by the way, the, um, the norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor I just mentioned, an example of that would be Shratera. Um, so for those alpha-2s, going back to the next category, uh, the way that those work is by you can think of them as having a calming effect on your sympathetic nervous system. So the sympathetic nervous system starts with an S, it's stimulating. It's the thing that responds in the event of an emergency run from a bear. So releasing norepinephrine and also and the sympathetic nervous system kind of go in hand in hand in terms of helping you get away from the bear. So the alpha-2 agonists help calm that experience down, but that's actually not why really directly how they work. The studies are still kind of unclear, but what we found is that it also has the effect of improving the connectivity in the prefrontal cortex of folks with ADHD. That was a lot of words. Basically, your prefrontal cortex or PFC is where all of the executive planning um, and attention sit. And so by improving the connection points and the communication in that part of the brain, you can adjust, you can attack or fix the attention deficit portion with those particular medications. And then you have your, so we have our, our um, NRIs, we have our alpha-2s, and then you have your NDRIs. So these medications are going to help keep dopamine and norepinephrine around and available for your body or your brain to use. An example of this type of medication is Welbutrin. And so you all may or may not know, Welbutrin is also used for depression and anxiety. And so um, what it does at higher doses actually, is it can also help deal with the ADHD symptoms because it does have that impact on dopamine. Most of us, when we go and start medications, are going to be offered stimulants because they are first line and they have been shown in many, many forms of research to be as effective. They are the, they're the best choice, but there are some downsides to um, taking stimulants, depending on if you're taking a long acting or short acting. And there are also some things to factor in into your own personal history that will affect whether or not you start a stimulant medication. So I'll tell you now, if you have 
really severe issues with your blood pressure, um, if you have a history of substance abuse, um, if you have a history of untreated bipolar disorder or schizophrenia, your doctor or your clinician may try to steer you away from stimulants because they can make an already challenging situation worse. Um, and so they may choose one of those non-stimulant options. The good news is that you have those three categories of medications to choose from within the non-stimulant option. So really for you, if you're sitting down thinking about what medications do I wanna start, don't just think about your ADHD. Think about the global picture of your health. What else is going on? If you're like me and you have ADHD and depression, you might wanna go with the Wellbutrin that's going to increase your norepinephrine and your dopamine because that's gonna help with your depression symptoms and at the higher doses, your ADHD symptoms. And you can always pair that with a stimulant medication. And the benefit of pairing the medications is it helps you uh, control your symptoms at a lower dose of the stimulants so you can reduce the side effects that often come with the stimulants. And speaking of side effects, so, uh, let's talk about them. So stimulants, typical side effects are things like insomnia. Obviously, they are stimulating. They're going to keep you awake, particularly if you're taking extended release type uh, formulations closer to bedtime or in the evening. Your body will not have broken those down quick enough and you will be up. Um, you can have dry mouth. Again, think about all of the symptoms that happen to you if you were to stand in front of a crowd to give a speech. Those are the side effects of stimulants. So your heart's going to raise, your blood pressure's going to increase, you're going to get dry mouth, um, you know, you may not be able to sleep because of the anxiety, all of those symptoms, those can be side effects of stimulants, particularly if you're taking too high of a dose or if you are taking, well, I guess if you were abusing it, that would be too high of a dose. So if you're taking too high of a dose. Um, or you have some of those other health things that come factor in to the picture. So first things first, think about your health globally. Usually what your doctor is going to try to do is give you a medication that addresses multiple issues in one. The worst possible thing to happen is to have a person take in five different medications for five different things when there is one medication that can address all five. So they're gonna look at your health globally and, and pick a medication for you. Like I said, in my case, I have both ADHD and depression. So any medication that's chosen for me has to factor that in, which is why I'm taking both the antidepressant, well, Butrin or Bupropion is the generic name, and Vyvanse for my ADHD um, in particular. So that can be the main thing. Stimulants are first line, but unfortunately for about 25 to 30 or so percent of the population of people who have ADHD, it may not be as effective for you. But again, like I said, you have other non-stimulant options that are available to you um, and can be as effective. So I talked about kind of stimulants within the group of stimulants, you have your long acting and your short acting. I've kind of talked about those in a little bit. Your long acting just means that it's, it's going to take your body, it's created in a way that will take your body longer to break it down. And that's really beneficial, particularly for me, if you're a busy adult and you don't have time to be stopping everything you're doing to take a medication two and three times a day, long acting is the thing for you. And more than likely it'll be your first, the first choice of your provider as well. Um, long acting, they tend to, well, stimulants in general tend to kick in around 20 minutes to an hour or so. They can, they can start working around there and long acting stay in the body for longer. So you get the benefit of having your ADHD symptoms controlled all day long with, by just taking one pill in the morning. Um, if you take the one pill in the morning and you decide, oh, if you discover that later on in the evening, you still need a little help. The great thing about long acting is you can always add a short acting stimulant to help give it that extra boost so that you can have that coverage for the rest of your day. Um, so that's long acting. Thing, examples of long acting will be any medication that you see with uh, ER on them, so extended release. Vyvanse is an example of long acting. Historically, Vyvanse has been super expensive. But you all may or may not know this, but Vyvanse actually just went generic. So the price of it may go down. 
Uh, and so it, it's more affordable and subsequently more available to everyone who may need it, which is wonderful, right? Um, of course, within stimulus, you also have your short acting. So this is your classic Adderall without any extended release or anything like that. Again, that's going to work in the body within 20 to 60 minutes or, or so. But the stim those kinds of short acting stimulants, they take you up and they take you down. They take you up and they take you down. And so you typically have to take those two and three times a day just to stay functional throughout your workday. I just think in general, having ADHD and having to be having to remember to take anything multiple times a day is like that's not gonna work. <laughs> so, so for me, that is not the choice. That is my, not my choice. I am not gonna remember to do that. I barely can remember to take my medications in the morning. Um, the other thing with the short acting is there is a higher risk of becoming addicted to them. Anything that gets into the body and takes you up and kind of gives you a little high feeling and then takes you down and you have to do that over and over again, over time, you're going to build up more of a, a tolerance and you'll have to have higher and higher doses depending on how you're taking it. And it increases the likelihood of you developing an abusive or unhealthy relationship with the medication. I'm specifically describing how we take medications as a relationship because your medication is going to work for you and with you but at the end of the day it is up to you to decide what that relationship needs to look like which brings me to one of the core benefits of taking a stimulant as opposed to a non-stimulant which is a drug holiday so you probably have or have not heard of that a drug holiday is basically where you don't take your stimulants on a specific day or on a specific group of days. So for me, I do not take my stimulant medication on, um, the, on the weekends or maybe even on holidays when I'm not working. So you do have that option of, of doing that with your, with your stimulants. I'm also on a non-stimulant, as I mentioned, which is the bupropion, which is our NDR, NDRI, which is gonna um, increase the availability of both our norepinephrine and dopamine. And I take that for the depression. It also has an impact on my ADHD, which is wonderful. Kill two birds with one stone. It is a non-stimulant. And so the downside of a non-stimulant is you can't take a drug holiday. These are medications you take every day regardless. So on the weekends, I won't take my Vyvanse, or if I'm not working, I won't take my Vyvanse, but I do have to continue to take my bupropion, a brand name is Wellbutrin, every day because that's part of, that's more, more of a, a maintenance medication, if you will. So um, those are the, the main things you need to decide. I would look at my health globally. What else is going on for me? What else do I need to address? What are the things that I need to stay away from because I have high blood pressure or maybe I have bipolar disorder and I don't wanna take any mood stabilizers for it. I have schizophrenia symptoms and I don't wanna take any medication. Those kinds of things are all gonna factor into which medication is right for you. And there, there really is no right or wrong choice. It's all about you and your health and what works best for you. Now, as you know, I also talk a lot about the genetics piece and how your genetics factors in, factor into this. And this is really where I'm gonna stress again, this importance of getting pharmacogenomic testing or PGX for short, because a lot of these medications are going to change the way they act in your body based upon your metabolism. And the thing that determines your metabolism is your genetics. So it's really, it'll be better for you to have a stronger understanding of where you sit at least genetically, to get a better understanding of how these medications will work specifically for you, even beyond just like the blanket, here's how it works in the general population. So there's that. The other thing that I would think about is what is my lifestyle like? Do I have a lifestyle that allows me to stop what I'm doing and take multiple medications a day? If you don't, then a short acting stimulant is probably not for you. Uh, you might want to lean to more of a long-acting stimulant. And for most of us as adults, that's, that's, the, that's the ticket there. Um, so think about those things. There, again, is no right or wrong choice. The medications are, stimulants are going to be your first line. I know a lot of you are having trouble getting stimulants. I understand. I, I know it can be hard. So what I'm really going to do in the next several videos is try to give you 
tools that are help in the case that you are not taking medication either by choice or because you just don't have the access. Um, because there are some really meaningful things you can do through therapies um, to help with the ADHD symptoms. That, that's it. <laughs> I said it all. So um, good luck out there choosing medications. I will continue to make videos like this if they're helpful. Let me know what you're, what you're curious about and what you're concerned about and I'll make videos that are related to those. So in the meantime, see you next week.